Welcome to this presentation on Orthogonal Frequency Division Multiplexing, OFDM. In this presentation, I'll walk you through how OFDM represents data and compare it to other techniques like Single Carrier Systems and Frequency Division Multiplexing, FDM. Additionally, I'll show you MATLAB code that you can run to explore different aspects of OFDM on your own. Now let's move on to the first part of the presentation. We begin by looking at a traditional single carrier system where data is transmitted using a sine wave. For example, we can send one waveform for a zero and its inverse for a one. In an ideal case, an infinite sine wave has a spectrum represented by a single spike, a direct delta function. But real signals are finite. They exist for the limited time. To achieve this, we multiply the carrier wave by a rectangular function to turn it on and off. However, this has a side effect. When we take the Fourier transform, the sharp spike broadens into a sync function in the frequency domain. In a single carrier system, only one user transmits data at a time. By assigning each user a different carrier frequency, multiple users can share the same link. This technique, known as Frequency Division Multiplexing FDM, divides the available bandwidth into non-overlapping subchannels. However, this approach comes at a cost. The subchannels need to be spaced far apart to ensure that the main lobes of each channel do not interfere with the side lobes of others. This issue is overcome in orthogonal frequency division multiplexing. In OFDM, the subchannels are closely spaced but remain orthogonal to each other, meaning they don't interfere. This is achieved by carefully selecting the subcarrier frequencies so that when one subcarrier reaches its peak, all the others are at zero. We can now add more subcarriers, maintaining this same principle. As you can see on the right, the frequency spacing between them is uniform, and when one subcarrier peaks, all others are at zero. By maintaining the orthogonality between subcarriers, OFDM allows for more efficient bandwidth usage, higher data rates, and greater resistance to interference. These advantages make OFDM an ideal choice for modern communication systems. That's why it's widely adopted in standards like Wi-Fi, 4G LTE, and 5G, where high capacity and reliable performance are critical in delivering fast and stable connections. This concludes the first part of the presentation. Now, let's move on to the next section, where I'll demonstrate the MATLAB code used to generate an OFDM signal and visualize its frequency spectrum. First, we generate the time domain signal for the OFDM subcarriers. To do this, we start by defining the sampling frequency, which determines the time sample's generation. Next, we specify the number of subcarriers in the OFDM system. This parameter directly affects the subcarrier spacing, the frequency gap between two consecutive subcarriers. Then, we select the subcarriers to be used, while the remaining ones are set to zero. We also define the discrete Fourier transform DFT padding, which will be useful later. Finally, we generate the time domain signal for each active subcarrier using sine waves with orthogonal frequencies. Now, let's plot each subcarrier waveform together in a single graph. As you can see, there are four distinct sine waves with frequencies ranging from 5 Hz to 8 Hz. In the next step, let's calculate the Fourier transform of each subcarrier using MATLAB's FFT function. To improve the resolution of the FFT, we use the second argument to pad the input signal with zeros. Without this padding, the synced side lobes wouldn't be visible in the spectrum. We also focus on the positive frequencies, which are located in the first half of the FFT result. Just like with a time domain signal, we will now plot each active subcarrier in the frequency domain. As shown in the plot, there are four distinct peaks, each representing one of the active subcarriers. At the peak of each subcarrier, the side lobes of the other carriers are at zero. In reality, we don't transmit the subcarriers independently. Instead, we sum all of them together to form a single combined signal. Let's take a look at the result. In the final step, we calculate the spectrum of the combined signal in the same way as before. As is shown in the plot, there are four subcarrier peaks, along with side lobes created by the sync function. And that's all for this presentation. I hope it gave you a better insight into OFDM. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. You'll find the code link in the description. If you found this helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. See you next time.